Hi, my name is Jeff Rhodes, and this is another video on the Power Platform based on my book, Creating Business Applications with Microsoft 365. And today we're going to do two videos. The first will be shorter, where we just talk about how to go from a Microsoft form to store, uh, storing the data in SharePoint, and we'll use Power Automate to do that. And then the second video, we will visualize that data with Power BI. So let's get started. So I've got a form based on something I've done recently where we're evaluating uh, Microsoft 365 Copilot. And it has some interesting uh, challenges that we'll talk about. Notice it says Platte Canyon here. So as you've seen in other videos, I always recommend making a group form so that the data is stored in Teams and SharePoint rather than in the person who wrote that form's OneDrive. But it does have a little bit of challenges that come with it. So let's look at the form and I'll show it in a second, but it's basically got some text and yes, no, and other types, some numeric and other data. One thing that's interesting, I, I do have a file upload feature, which uh, means what happens is it has to be only people in the tenant. If you tried to expose externally, it won't allow you to do that if you have a file upload for security reasons. But I'm going to treat it as if it's anonymous. That's why I have the email address in there so I can try it with different people because I've only got myself and my tenants. Otherwise, only I'd be the only one to fill it out. Uh, so let's go ahead and collect responses so that we can see what the form looks like and also that we're going to need the ID anyway. So let me first copy the ID. We're going to need that when we get to Power Automate because... A group form doesn't show up in the list of all your available forms, so you have to grab the, uh, the ID. So I'm just going to copy that in the clipboard all the way up into the ampersand. And then what I've got is some yes, no questions, so we can see how that goes. Got some numeric, what's the rating, how many minutes do you save, and then some multiple answer, which applications have you used it, which ones are most effective, and then upload the file. Since it's a little bit involved and I've covered it in other videos, I'm not going to copy the uploaded files over to SharePoint. I've got examples of both how to do it to a SharePoint list like this, also to a SharePoint document library. But all I want this time is to be able to see that inside Power BI so we can go back to the original response if we wanted to go see the attachments. So let's jump over to Power Autumn. Oh, actually, sorry, I want to go over to SharePoint next. So I built the SharePoint list, but there are some unexpected things that you got to watch. So let's go to list settings so we can see all the columns. So the main thing to do is all those yes, no's, which are all these ethical ones, you'd think I would make them yes, no, but this is a problem with Power Automate. It won't, it's trying to help you. It won't let you put string data which is the answer to a question, into a yes, no, or a Boolean column. So we need to make these single line of text. And then we can, do, we can fix that when we get to Power BI. Same thing with these numeric ones. It will uh, want you to have uh, multiple, or to, to, it wants numeric data, and it's not quite smart enough, particularly for that rating, to know that's what it comes, comes as. And then it's real important for these ones that have multiple answer to make sure you say multiple lines of text. And you also want to make sure it's plain text. So you can see right here. Don't make it rich text or it'll put some HTML and stuff that's just a hassle to deal with. And then I'm really not sure on this has attachments. I made a yes, no, but if, if I have problems, I'll go ahead and change that to single line of text as well. So let's go over, I'm gonna make a new flow, I'm gonna make an automated cloud flow. And the first choice is what I want, the new response submitted from a form, I'm gonna call it video copilot form. And notice, as I mentioned, it's looking, but I don't have a copilot one here because it's looking for my personal form. So I say custom value and I just paste in that ID that I put in the clipboard. And then I do it again. 
grab the response details again, put the custom value in there. And now we know if it works, if I see, oops, wasn't what I was expecting. There we go. See the response ID when a new form's selected. So what I want to do next is go to SharePoint. See if I see it here. Yeah, create items in the first list. Got to make sure I get the right URL. Pick my list. M365 Copilot Feedback. And then I say Show All, just so I can see all the parameters. And then we just have to match up the columns to the questions. So you want to make sure your questions are unique so you can find them. And most of the time I have to say See More. So enter your email address. Fortunately, these aren't in any particular order, so I just got to look for the question. So this one says comprehensive. Whoops. I saw it and then I. Oh, I got to show all again. What I do. There you go. I saw it, but I clicked the wrong one. Are they comprehensive? Are they thorough? Click there. That adhere to ethical guidelines. There it is. And then do you recommend based on ethical practices? There we go. Is the ethical testing transparent? Are you satisfied with the transparency? There we go. So that was all my yes and no. So that worked with the single line of text. Now we're saying what's the rating? What is your overall rating? Uh, what is the impact on productivity? Hard one I'm looking for, it, so I'm trying to find the training. You guys probably can see it. Oh, how effective was your training? How many minutes a day do you anticipate? All right, so now we're almost done. Which Microsoft 365 applications do you use? Which Microsoft 365 applications do you find most effective? Let's see if this attachment works. We say custom value. Oh, it does say no dynamic content available so that's kind of a hassle so again it couldn't i thought there was a oh actually yeah i remember what i wanted to do on that i actually did want to do a variable with that so that'll work so let's come back there so we'll just do it before we create items so let's do a variable and i'm gonna initialize but I didn't see it on the list so let's initialize variable and we'll say var has attachment and we'll have to watch if I can get this boolean or not but let's try it so let's go custom yeah it won't let me do that but that's alright so I'll just won't I will do an if then. So let's like to put that in there. So let's do a condition or control and then condition. So let's say 
have GIF attachment. So we can say if, now I can get all the ones and I have to just find the please upload. Yeah, so if it's equal to null, and probably the easiest thing, so actually let's change this. It'll say if it's not equal to null, so that'll put us if it's true, then I'm going to go ahead and set the variable to true. So I'll say set var has attachment. And then what I'll do, rather than do it twice in the false, I'll just initialize this to false. There, that'll do it. Now I can come back over here. And now since I have a Boolean variable, should allow me to do it now. So let's, yeah, there we go. Var has attachment. All right. So let's try that. So let's, uh, I've got this form already there. So I'm just gonna I'll first just do my normal email. And for this one, I'm gonna say yes on all of them. And when I'll, I'll pause the video, or actually between the two videos, I'll put a bunch of training in there. I mean, I'll put a bunch of test data, so I've got some. If I want that to be four, I'll do that as three. I'm gonna say 29 minutes a day. And didn't use it in say one note a whole lot. Which do you find the most effective? Don't find it as effective in Excel. Find it real effective in these other ones. And then I'll put a screen capture in there. Let's see if I can find, I'll just go to my documents. Actually, I'll go to pictures here. Let's see if I can find some picture to put in. Whoops. So I want in. And I'll just put a copilot image in here. And I'll say submit. All right, so let's go back. Oh, and I'm not sure I saved that, so I probably did it too late. Let's see if it captures. I might need to do it again. I'll, let me go. I'll do another response. We'll see if I got the first one or not. And I'll say note all these just for testing and I'll say one actually that was two one four ten I'll just do a couple of these I'll do one more to see if I can. Uh, let's see what else I want to put in there. There's a picture of me from running. I'll put that in there. Oh, missed one of them. Submit. Oh, yeah, it looks like the. One of them went. Let's go look at it for a second. All right, so we'll check and see if it had an attachment. So it, both of them I did, and it's set it to true, so that's a good sign. Went there and went to the create item and did a bunch of stuff in here. So that's good. Let's go look at our list. Yep, 
There we go. So it looks like both of them got it. So I caught the first one. You can see it's got yes, yes. These ones said no. And by the way, if you really want to test, make sure you didn't do any errors. You need to like put a little note like and just answer the first one no and then the second one then the third one because it's easy if you swap these you can miss kind of subtle bugs there so got my numbers and then i really want to point out we'll get to this more when we get to the second video that uh, this data is what we call json data so let me just go to edit just so we can see it a little bit better So it's got the brackets and things in quotes. And then when we get to Power BI, we've got to split all that out so that we can get some good data on there. And let's make sure, yeah, so both of these that has attachments is true. I'll do some tests without it, make sure it says the fall. So hopefully that was helpful. Come back for the second video and uh, we'll look at this in Power BI. Have a great day.